As we continue learning about all types of effects, it becomes inevitable that we need to discuss system playback and rendering options, especially as we begin to explore some of the more complex effects. So we've seen this a stack of clips before. We built it earlier in this chapter. But I've since added a bunch more effects to each clip. So notice that when I play, it's not going to be very smooth. Let me talk about why that is. When you edit with video, especially as you begin layering video like this and adding lots of effects, the computer does have to start working harder and harder to try to play everything back in real time. It uses its processor, RAM, graphics card, and more to make sure it can handle what you throw at it. And if there's too much to play back and the computer can't keep up, then you'll drop frames on playback. Obviously, that's not what you want, so you need to be aware of what's happening and what you can do to fix it. I'd like to play the sequence again and get a sense of how badly it's dropping frames. To do that, I'm going to come to this wrench here, and I'm going to come to uh, Show Dropped Frame Indicator. Okay, so I see this little green dot here, and as long as it stays green, I'm not dropping frames. If it turns yellow, though, I know I've dropped frames. So let's play again. Okay, so it turned yellow, obviously, but to find out how many frames I dropped, I'm gonna hover my cursor right over it, and you can see that 93 frames dropped during playback. Now, what do we do with this information? Well, depending on what you're doing and who needs to see this, you may or may not want to render this section of the timeline. The reason for this is that when I export the sequence, Premiere Pro automatically renders everything that needs rendering, so you don't actually have to render the sequence that you're working on prior to export. However, if you absolutely need smooth playback in software, either for yourself or someone else to view the effect design, then you'll need to make sure that you're not dropping frames. Now, one way you can often make that happen without rendering is by changing your playback resolution here. Normally, this is actually set to half, which is fine during editing. I've cheated a bit and I've changed it to full so that we would drop frames during this demo. So I'm going to back this off to half and we'll play it again and see if we're still dropping frames. Keep an eye on the drop frame indicator. Okay, so just by changing my playback resolution, that solved the problem. And notice I could go down to one quarter if I needed to. Now, let's say that no matter what, even by going down to the very lowest playback resolution, I was still dropping frames. In that case, I'd need to render. So what is rendering? When you render, you actually create a standalone video file that is comprised of everything that's happening at a certain point in your sequence. So instead of making the system take all of the video and all of the effects and do all of the mathematical algorithms to play everything back, Instead, you're just writing a single video file that contains all of the layers and effects mixed together as one entity. All right, so when you play a rendered file, everything is guaranteed to play back smoothly. So when do you know when something needs to be rendered? Well, besides the obvious of the sequence struggling or dropping frames, there are other clues as well. Let's take a look at these lines here. A yellow line indicates that Premiere Pro will have to do some processing on the fly, but it won't drop any frames. A red line indicates that it may play back without dropping any frames, and in many cases, it probably will play back without dropping frames, but it's not guaranteed. At any rate, in this hypothetical scenario, we've drawn the conclusion that we do, in fact, need to render. The render command is contained within the sequence drop-down menu, and you'll see that there are quite a few. I'm going to discuss render into out and render effects into out. So I'm going to set an in and an out point and then come up to Sequence and choose Render Effects into Out. And what this is doing is it's going to render areas with just the red lines. You'll notice that it ignored the yellow and it's just rendering the red. And the red turns green as soon as it's rendered. So you'll see that we got smooth playback there, and even if I choose uh, full here, and I'll play it again, you'll see that we, again, will have smooth playback. All right, 
Now, what if I would have chosen render into out? Well, render into out will render both areas that have yellow lines and red lines. So this produces a really smooth playback because it renders everything. But to be honest, it's usually pretty unnecessary to render the yellow portions of the timeline because Premiere Pro guarantees playback on those regions anyway. So let me just do this with a subset of the sequence. I'm just going to mark an in and an out here to show you what happens. So I'm just going to go to uh, render into out. And it's going to render the area that was yellow, and it actually skips any areas that are already rendered, so it doesn't do a double render. All right, so as computers have gotten faster, the number of must-render items continues to drop. However, you will sometimes run into items that do need rendering, and now you have the tools to determine exactly how that works.